The verdict on the 2611 co-accused Tahavur Rana's trial has been delayed. The 12-member jury is now split over the verdict and will meet again tomorrow to discuss his fate. In closing arguments at the Rana trial here in Chicago only a short while ago, the defense urged the 12-member jury, don't let him fool you like he fooled Rana. There was one of him, there is 12 of you. And these 12 jury members are huddled in close deliberation, even as we speak, trying to decide the fate of Tahavur Hussein Rana, guilty or not guilty, at the courthouse, waiting for the verdict four times now, Shalini Parikh. Mr. Charlie Swift, who was a recent addition to the Rana defense attorney team, has been a very strong advocate for the rights of all, in particular, minor minorities that stand trial in terrorism cases in the United States. Mr. Swift, thank you for joining us. At this point in the trial, we are at a very crucial juncture where the jury the critical jury in the United States will determine in a short while where this trial is eventually headed. But my question to you is, how does the profile, the demographics of the jury determine the direction the case will take? You know, in some ways, I think what I'm looking for in any jury is people who aren't afraid, uh, having been doing this now for 10 years. My greatest fear is that someone will be convicted solely because we're afraid of them, not because of the evidence. If you say terrorism, that's the end of the trial. Uh, and that you know, we heard from jurors that just simply based on the charges, then the individual had to be guilty. Uh, that's a great fear. So first and foremost, I, pay, uh, you know, I hope to get a jury that's courageous. I believe that we've gone... You know, based on their answers, the jury is courageous. I don't think they'll decide the case out of fear. I think they'll decide it on the evidence. Uh, this is a difficult case because it really comes down to what did Dr. Rana know and when did he know it? Uh, and, you know, that's, that's an issue that I think reasonable minds could differ on. Uh, certainly Dr. Rana has uh, indicated from the very beginning that he didn't know. And there are strong things in his actions that indicated that he didn't know. But... You know, the prosecution has their points as well. Well, you in particular understand the cultural overtones in this case. And the cultural overtones in some ways overwhelm this case. There were over 1,000 pages or more, you would know, of translated documents as, as FBI forensic experts testified. Who were you satisfied at all points with the veracity of these documents? And even more importantly, how the email, emails in court that are produced as evidence and the embedded messages, their deciphering is at so many different levels. You're right. This part is it's a very difficult question. The United States has a jury of your peers, and Dr. Ronald lives here, and it's a difficult question. Would I be comfortable, more comfortable, with a group of Pakistani and Indians deciding this case. Yes, actually I would, because they would understand the issues of friendship. They would understand uh, communications. They could hear the language in, in languages that they speak. That would be my ideal. Um, that's not available here. Uh, from the standpoint of the translations, we had a translator go through all of them. I'm satisfied that they're translated accurately, but translations are only part of it. What somebody means, what is a joke, what isn't a joke. Whether you know, a, a critical issue here, a critical issue was this idea that there was a statement about David Headley's targets. Mm -hmm. From our viewpoint, this is a joke. This is Dr. Rana joking with him, making fun of loose talk that he makes mm -hmm. in the standpoint. And he's, Dr. Rana is not agreeing with him. He's making fun of him and saying that you're always talking about these things. Of course, he doesn't believe that he does them and that people in India or Pakistan would understand that better. And you know, if Dr. Rana is convicted... I fear that the only reason he would be convicted on this evidence is misunderstanding. It is the, the, the greatness of the American system is that it uses a jury. The weakness is sometimes that the jurors don't uh, know, can't completely understand what happened there. You know, in the end, we trust in God. We did our best. We'll see what happens. For me, part of this is, is 
the education, trying to educate people, trying to make them understand what's going on. Uh, I, I often tell the story that the greatest problem for us in this struggle as the United States is our lack of understanding of the other countries, other cultures, and other people. Um, everyone knows about the United States, and we are a melting pot for every culture. But sadly, largely, we don't know, because when people come to the United States, they become Americans, and their culture becomes secondary. And so the United States citizens, even a generation removed, start to forget. And that's one of our greatnesses, because we're not held back. At the same time, it's weakness, because we don't understand. And you know, it, I think that that's the great challenge and the great difficulty here. The, the United States has only been the world's leader for 60 years. Only 60 years. And I think that it is, you know, Learning about uh, other cultures and about the rest of the world is our greatest challenge. And, you know, I go into these trials understanding that that's probably my greatest challenge, simply to educate people. The jury system in the United States is unique in that these 12 member juries come together in a room sequestered until they arrive at a unanimous decision. They have no interaction from the outside with either the prosecution, the defense, or the judge. Today, the jury that was sequestered in a room by itself while deliberating had a couple of questions that they threw out at the defense and the prosecution asking for an answer. And these questions were, was Pasha affiliated with LET, ISI, or both? And the second question was, was Kashmiri affiliated with LET? Imagine a jury going into the details and the chronology of this event and the many organizations and terrorist networks and the players that were in question.